This is a Subaru BRZ TS. It's quite a special BRZ because it's tuned by STI. That's what TS stands for. And STI have touched everything except the engine. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but this does not have an engine from a WRX STI. Instead, it still runs the very same 2.4 litre flat four petrol boxer engine that produces 174 kilowatts and 250 newton meters of torque, which was co-developed with Toyota. So if Subaru have put a tuned by STI badge on this BRZ, what has STI actually changed? So for just over $52,000, you can buy yourself a BRZ TS, which is actually just over four grand more than the top spec non TS BRZ. And you're getting two major changes. One are some stiffer and more responsive Hitachi dampers made by, yes, that company that makes a lot of things, including that thing you're thinking of as well, but they also make dampers and these have been tuned by STI for this car. And the second thing you're getting are some gold brake calipers, which are Brembo brakes for the front and rear brakes as well. And then you're also getting some aesthetic changes. And so those aesthetic changes include some new wheels. We've also got some STI badging in the gauge cluster around the start stop button and also on the seats and some red leather on these seats as well. And for some reason, exclusive to the BRZ TS, we get a black shark fin roof antenna. There's also BRZ TS badging around this car to let everyone know that you've got the more special BRZ. But let me quickly remind you about the BRZ. It's a rear wheel drive sports car with a naturally aspirated motor and a six speed manual transmission. You can opt for an automatic, but unless you physically cannot drive an automatic, you'd have to have something wrong with you if you're gonna buy the automatic over this manual because simply the automatic is slower in acceleration compared to the manual. So that is the main and only reason why you should not buy the automatic. It's okay on fuel. I've been seeing fuel figures around 10 liters per 100 Ks because you have to rev this thing out and that's not so great for fuel consumption when you want to get power out of this thing. But if Subaru has gone through all this effort to employ STI to do some tuning on this car, is it actually worth spending over $4,000 more to get this instead of a regular BRZ? So this is a pretty simple review. We just want to find out if it's actually worth paying more for a suspension and brake upgrade. Pretty much everything else is aesthetics and it doesn't really matter. But what does matter are those mechanical upgrades. But if you're worried about the reliability of a new Subaru BRZ, you can visit productreview.com.au because they're going to be able to read reviews from people who actually bought and lived with the Subaru BRZ and pretty much every other car sold here in Australia. And you can see what they have to say about the long-term reliability of their own car. And you can also review your own car there as well. So I simply want to see if improving the brakes, which have these nice gold brake calipers on them, and this new STI tuned suspension actually makes much more of a difference that's worth justifying a $4,000 price increase compared to a regular BRZ. Now, two things about the BRZ TS that the guys at Throttle House point it out first is that number one this suspension and brake upgrade is going to be cheaper with Subaru doing it than compared to you unless you're part of a major Subaru group who's doing a group buy on a tuned suspension upgrade and also a brake package as well but because Subaru is a giant OEM they can utilize something called economies of scale and they'll be cheaper for them to give you this as a package rather than you going out and doing it by yourself and also it's well known that any aftermarket modifications you do to your car which are usually quite popular to do with something like a BRZ or a Toyota 86, the value of those modifications don't really seem to be carried through when you sell this second hand. People don't value modifications the same way you did when you spent that money on them. But if they buy a Subaru BRZ TS, they know this is all factory. So it means that extra money you spent here will mean that you can probably sell this for more than a regular BRZ because this is a special edition. And more importantly, it's from the factory. But I'll be real with you for a second. This interior aesthetic upgrade isn't necessary, but it is nice to have the STI branded seats with this red coloring on them. You've also got an STI red engine start stop button and STI logo in the gauge cluster. All that is very nice to have. And I do enjoy the red stitching in here as well. But if all that went away and I was driving around in my normal BRZ, would I miss it? Absolutely not. But is it nice to have? Sure, it's nice to have on top of the suspension and brake upgrade that this car comes with. So it makes it feel a tiny bit more special as a factory special edition. And so what I think is a missed opportunity is for STI to put some more aggressive seats in here as well, but these seats are still very comfortable and very supportive. Well, the power's the same, and that's not a bad thing. I actually really enjoy the power in the BRZ. 
As I've mentioned in my Toyota 86 review and my two other BRZ reviews, they've ironed out that torque dip as much as they can and it makes a bit of a difference. What I don't like is the fake sound generator in here. It's not that great and it makes for a really noisy interior where it doesn't have to be. And I kind of want this to be a bit quieter when I'm driving around town and I wish you could disable that without having to go to a dealership or pulling a fuse. Now on a back road like this, these Hitachi dampers are, yeah, a little bit jumpy, but they're not too stiff. If you're worried about this car being ultra stiff, like something like a Civic Type R, don't worry about that. It's not that type of car. Now let's see how much of a difference these dampers make through some sharp corners. I feel like cornering in the BRZ TS is more effortless than it was in the BRZ. There's not as much body roll here, and this car likes to remain relatively still through a corner, which is a nice thing to have. And of course, re being rear wheel drive helps a lot. I just feel like, oh, we've got lots of cornering grip here, and that's a really nice thing. <laughs> just moves so well through these quarters. And I can say that if you want the better handling BRZ, the TS is an awesome option. <laughs> just, I, I, this is a genuine reaction that I'm a bit skeptical about this car because I don't think there's been much changed here, but the way this car grips through corners now is really, really impressive. Now this car's wearing Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, so we've got plenty of grip here as well. And it just, It's fascinating to me because before this car sort of struggled for grip through corners a tiny bit, and I'm pretty sure it's because of the body roll through the car translating to the tires and there's only so much grip these tires have. But going through those corners there, I wasn't detecting much slippage at all. Mind you, I wasn't going terribly fast, but it feels like the way this car can grip up now with this new suspension setup just feels a whole lot more controlled. And once you're on this tarmac, the suspension is actually pretty smooth as well. And this car will let you know where the speed cameras are, so that's pretty good actually. Now, I'm a bit of a sucker for these sorts of upgrades. I think making meaningful mechanical changes to a car is always a good thing and I'd always be prepared to pay for something like that. But I think some people might be let down by the fact this doesn't have any power upgrades and there's been a light amount of aesthetic changes in this car. And these upgraded Brembos do make a big difference as well. The braking ability in this car is mostly improved with this upgrade. And it's a good thing because we want this car to brake as well as it handles. But the thing is, it's funny giving a car bigger brakes without giving it more power. But we always welcome better braking ability because these are the fundamental things you should change in your car before you add more power. And of course, there's a restriction in budget and I like the fact that Subaru have gone ahead and given this thing meaningful upgrades that actually will make a difference to your lap times on track. Because if you give this thing more power and don't change anything else about it, you might actually compromise the ability of this car. And just cornering has never been easier in the BRZ. This is insane. The steering wheel feel is actually decent. There's been some people who say they don't like the steering feel in the BRZ, but I actually kind of like it. They've got a lightweight sports car with a naturally aspirated motor with great handling, but yeah, not a ton of power. So you're not gonna win drag races, but you might catch up to plenty of people in the corners. Personally, I love these upgrades on the BRZ. This makes it a perfect back road driving vehicle and also an ideal track vehicle thanks to that brake upgrade and the suspension upgrade. Everything else doesn't really matter, but what does matter is the price. And for a similar amount of money, you can buy an MX-5 with a GT RS package with similar upgrades. But I do find this to be a far more capable car out on the road. It's more stiff, it feels a bit more aggressive the GT RS is nice and has good upgrades over the basic MX-5, but it doesn't feel as capable as this. And if you think buying a BRZ for over $50,000 or you're already thinking about doing these exact upgrades to your car on the aftermarket, you should go and buy one of these. But if you don't want to spend over $50,000, just buy a regular BRZ S because that's what I would do because I think the standard car is brilliant and unless you want those mechanical upgrades or you know you're going to need them, you don't have to have them.